Adam here with Wholesale Septic Supply. Today we're going to go over what type of pump you're going to need and what pump you should choose for the application that you have. There is some confusion out there on what pump I have. We get a lot of phone calls. Everybody thinks, um, you know, they think they have a solids pump or they think they have a grinder pump or they think they need a grinder pump uh, when they really need a solids pump and so on and so forth. So we're going to clarify some of the questions and um, kind of misinformation that's out there on what pump and what style you need. So uh, from my my right to my left, this is a solids pump. This is a affluent slash sump pump. This is a affluent uh, pump as well. These are high head affluent pumps, these two here, or turbine pumps, some people call them that. And this is a grinder pump. So we're gonna show you the differences in them and when you're looking for a pump, what you really need. Now, there are some uh, key things that you can do to find out exactly what you need as well. So on your solids pumps, uh, you'll have a wider volute is what it's called. And that's where the water enters the pump to get discharged. And you'll see that this bottom section, this bottom section here is much thicker than the bottom section section here or on this pump. It's really thin. That's that's all there is on this is these two pieces of metal together. And then it creates a vortex inside and discharges on here. You have all this room in order for that to happen so it can pass much larger objects. And that's why it's called a solids pump versus an affluent pump. So on these pumps, you have a screen here and a screen here where the water comes in. The motor on this one is here and the pump end is here and the water discharges through here. And you can see that this is very small. So the <clears throat> purpose of this pump would be to pump filter to fluid. This pump being a grinder pump uh, is made to chop up things in industrial applications and things of that. We also use them in applications such as uh, you need more head pressure to overcome some things. You have to pump at a further distance. These are good as well. We're going to go over each individual pump and I'm going to show you the differences in all of them so that you know and that you're educated on them and also what to look out for when you're buying a pump because they're not all equal as far as quality and the internal components. So uh, we'll get into this uh, right now. Okay, so the first pump we're going to go over is the solids pumps, and we're going to we're going to show you the difference in them. So the solids pump is used for, let's say you have a, there's multiple uses because there's multiple horsepowers, but let's say you have a shop, and uh, the shop's in the back, you want to put a bathroom in it, and uh, you don't want to have to put in a whole septic system. So you would put this type of pump in there in a basin, and then it would pump or in a big tank, and it would uh, suck up everything and then send it over to the septic system. So you would want this style of pump. Uh, and the reason is, is because you have different, uh, this one comes with different flanges. This is three inch and this is two inch. So that's uh, one way to tell uh, also. Most of your solids pumps, I would say 95% of them, if they have a two inch discharge, it is a two inch solids pump, especially in your half horsepower to one horsepower range, which is the most common for residential use. Another another thing that's different, that's a very that's a telltale one, is the size of the volute here is very large compared to this style pump here, where it's not so large, it's thinner. And also your opening on the bottom is two inches in diameter. So when it says it's a two inch pump, it means it'll suck up something two inches in diameter and it will spit it out. You could feed this thing golf balls all day long in a, in a pump and it would suck them in there and spit them out. So uh, that is the difference in a, in a solids type pump. You have a lot more flexibility with these style pumps too, where you could use them in an affluent application uh, where you could put them in there as an affluent pump. The difference is they don't put out as much head. So you might only get 25 foot of lift out of this we're on a pump like this, you might get 35 to 40. So sometimes you need that in order to for it to operate. But if you don't, this is a pretty good universal option to put on a unit is a solids pump. So there's not much difference as far as RPM and all that is concerned on these uh, versus these as far as the motor speed. But uh, you get that you get more versatility out of it. So uh, and that's what you would use a, a solids pump for. This is a half horsepower pump. It has a float switch attached to the side. Uh, you want to be mindful when you're putting it in your tank that it doesn't 
hit the wall or get hung up on the wall. It's a wide angle float, so it has to come up wide and then it turns off and goes down. Uh, we like this option better. Some of the pumps come with a, a float switch that is attached to a bar that goes up and down. The issue with that, this is a common pump for that. The issue we have with that is that a lot of times, if the float switch goes bad, like water gets in or something like that and then it's broke, you just have to change out the float switch on it. If it's attached to the pump, usually it's built in, the whole pump is junk at that point. So you can't just switch it out, you have to switch the whole pump out. So we do like this float switch um, arrangement better than the attached float switch to the pump that's built into it. It just gives you more flexibility. Uh, they're, they're just better, okay, in our opinions. So uh, that's uh, what a solids pump is. That's what a solids pump is used for. You can use a solids pump in 90% of residential applications. You do not need to get a grinder pump and spend $1,000 on it uh, to do simple pumping. Uh, these are also used to uh, pump to the city sometimes if it's not a pressure uh, main. Uh, they can pump to the city, especially if you have three tanks or two tanks. The first tank usually catches all the trash. And then uh, there's this tank that you know goes to, then it pumps to the city if it's not a pressure main. You'd have a check valve on it, obviously, as well. So that's what this pump is used for. These pumps range in size, too. So you have these pumps that go all the way to 100 horsepower or more solids pumps. There's, there's some big solids pumps out there. But for this uh, class, that's what you're looking at. When you get to the really big solids pumps, that's, you know, sometimes that's your only option. But for uh, what we're talking about today, um, this will cover about 90% of what you need in an application, uh, this pump will right here. So that's it on the solids pump. We're gonna go into the affluent pump. So the next pump we have is an affluent pump or a sump style pump. So your sump style pumps uh, are a little bit different in their design than the solids pumps. They have a smaller volute on them. They also have a cage on the bottom normally. Now sometimes the cage looks like this, or sometimes they just have this piece right here, and they don't have this. And that is a, a huge difference is large solids cannot go in there. So if you put this into a solids application, the issue is this. Your toilet paper and other things can get sucked up against this that won't pass this. They'll starve the pump of water and the pump will get really hot and it'll burn up because it's not moving any water, floats in the on position, pump's just running and running and running nonstop, and then you have issues. So the piping is also smaller. This is inch and a half compared to two inch. Um, so there are some uh, major differences in what the pumps do and what their applications are. So a lot of these are used in sump applications as well. So there's some confusion on, I have a sump pump or I have an affluent pump. They're pretty much the same thing, okay, as far as design, volute size, other things. Some pumps tend to be a little bit smaller in some applications. Sometimes they can be bigger. But uh, in a sump application, you're not gonna have any kind of solids coming in there. It's mostly just water, and that's what they're designed for. Affluent, you can have some solids, but generally the water is pretty clean. Affluent means finally, final treated uh, sewage water, uh, and that means the water should be pretty clear. There should not be a lot of solids in there, uh, things of that nature. So that would be what this uh, pump is here. So uh, these are pretty common in uh, a lot of the northern states uh, from that have basements that don't have sprinkler pumps, uh, things of that nature. There's a lot of these uh, out there for that application, and that's why they're so prevalent out there, and there's some confusion on them. Another identifying marker on all pumps, there should be a plate that is put in them. All the high-end, high uh, reputable companies have a, they put this in there. And this doesn't get damaged, and it's imprinted too, because you'll get some sediment and corrosion and things. But you should be able to tell, and it should give you, it'll give you a model number. This is an N980002. So, and then here's the model number, N98D, half horsepower, 150, gives you everything. So it gives you your voltage, uh, it gives you your amperage, it gives you your how many phases it is. This says it's a half horsepower, 115 volt, single phase, 9.4 amps. So it gives you the data manufacturer and your hertz. Most pumps will have some kind of plate. They might not give you all that information, but they will give you voltages and phase. 
uh, and they will give you horsepower. Sometimes you don't have the model number. Most of them will have that as well. So uh, the data manufacturer, not all of them have that, but it's good to know that. And then you can go, oh, this pump lasted eight years or this pump lasted 10 years. So that gives you an idea of the quality of the pump that was in the unit, and you'd probably want to buy that again. So we'll go over that on the next pump. I'm going to show you guys the internals of the pump, what it looks like, and they're all pretty universal in how they're built. So this is a cutaway of a pump and what it looks like internally, and we've taken the bottom part uh, uh, off so we can remove this and, and show you the bottom. You can see that there is a seal here, and that seals uh, water from getting into the motor. Uh, and this is a single seal motor. Some of them have dual seal motors on them, uh, and th those are a little more expensive, but you can see the impeller right here. So that's what spins, um, it opens up, and I took this apart. See, there's, there's not much clearance here. This hole is much smaller than the solids pump. Uh, it's probably an inch across, if that. It's got the cage on the bottom to protect it. Uh, so this is an affluent style pump. And all pumps are going to have an impeller. So that's the impeller that is spinning to move the water to uh, get it in. Now, this is, another, this is another point also. This is what gets caught up when um, fibrous materials go in there. Uh, tampons, wipes, all those other things. Is What happens is this is spinning and a stringy material gets on it. It starts wrapping around this. Then the pump stops and now it's stuck on there. And when it tries to kick back on, it will not kick back on. So these are not designed to do that. And there's another pump that we're gonna get into down the road that is designed to chop that up. And sometimes even those have problems. So um, this is the impeller. They all have an impeller in there. And the impeller design is, is important. Uh, some impellers will do higher head, some will do lower, more volume. So there's all kinds of, of variables in there. And that's why it's important that you look at what type of pump you have see how long it's worked for you, and then go from there. If you have a pump and you've only had it nine months, then it breaks, and it's a brand new pump, and it's a brand new application, it might not be the pump for you. That, that might be a problem. But if you've had a pump and you, you know, if you've been there 10 years, and now the pump's just going out, that's a good pump. That pump lasted a long time. You should probably rebuy that pump, uh, do your amortization over the years. You know, it's a $500 pump. Well, I mean, it only works out to $30 a year. You could be buying a cheaper pump, and what will happen is it won't last as long, and it's half as much, but it only lasted half the time, and now you're buying another pump, and now you've spent just as much as you would on a good pump, and you're having to put a lot of time into it. So those are all things to consider when you're buying a pump. Uh, another thing, you're, you have different pumps. There's no real rule on horsepower. So uh, that's another uh, misconception is some people will say, well, this is a one horsepower pump. Well, this one horsepower pump is $300. Why are all the other one horsepower pumps $900? There's no rule or set standard in the industry for what the horsepower is. And you can usually, you can look at the amperage, you know, how many amps it draws or how much voltage it, not voltage, it'd be uh, kilowatts it's using uh, to, to see. And if it says, well, this one's six amps and all the other one horsepower pumps are 15 amps, well, why is that? It's, it's probably not a true one horsepower pump. So those are things you wanna look at. A good pump will have these traits. There's an upper bearing and there's a lower bearing on this. Your cheap pumps, let's say your big box stores, we'll just say that, not like a plumbing supply or something like that. They won't include this upper bearing. And the problem with that is it doesn't keep the motor um, still. When, when things go in there or something jolts it, this tends to move around, which then the motor moves, and then you start having problems and you have wear on the motor. So a good pump will have upper and lower bearings on it. Uh, your cheaper pumps that have like plastic tops and things like that, they won't have an upper and lower bearing. They'll just have a single bearing operation. All the pumps that we have have an upper and lower bearing. So uh, that's an important feature. So you might be looking at pumps that, oh, this pump's only $80 and this pump's $150. Well, that pump probably doesn't have an upper bearing. There's probably some other things. So um, those are things you want to look at when you're choosing a unit is does it have an upper and lower bearing? Uh, does it have a seal? Some pumps have cast iron bottoms. Some have plastic. Um, 
there's pros and cons to both. The plastic doesn't necessarily mean it's going to uh, limit its life, but for instance, this pump has a cast iron impeller. Some of the pumps have plastic impellers. Cast iron impellers will probably last longer. So uh, those are those are things you want to consider when you're buying a pump. So this is a, this is a one horsepower grinder pump, and um, grinders typically you, you have one horsepower. They don't come in much uh, less horsepower than that. It's a little iffy when you go uh, lower than that. Usually they're one to two horsepower are the most common. Grinder pumps are just made up to 7.5 horsepower. Now 7.5 horsepower grinder is extremely large. So I mean it'd be up to here on me uh, and that's about as big as they come. A grinder's pump intention, what they, what they started to do was because of wipes and other things, they needed a pump that would grind down the material and make it smaller so that it could pass through. Plus you'd be surprised what goes into the city sewers uh, and sewers in general. So a grinder pump has a blade on the bottom. Generally they spin at a higher RPM. This blade here cuts the things coming in, all right? And then inside there is an impeller. So this is not the impeller. This is just cutting, it's attached to the impeller, and then what happens is it passes through. So uh, that is what this pump is intended to do. Some people will say, well, you don't need a grinder in all applications, or uh, the grind it's not good for the grinder pump to just pass water, or uh, th things of that nature. On all pumps, if it says it turns at 3,450 RPM, it's turning at 3,450 RPM no matter what. I don't care if there's solids, no solids going into it. All of that, that's just the speed that it is. It's constant speed motor. So um, <clears throat> this is what a grinder pump does. Now, the thing is on this, not everybody needs these. A lot of times, if this is going to, um, if your house is on a city sewer and you have a lift station, you would put this on there and go from your house into the little lift station and it's getting grinded up, it's getting sent to the city sewer. Some city sewers have what's called pressure main, so you need the head pressure that this produces. This is about 50 head versus the other ones at 30. And you need that pressure to push through the check valve to get into the city sewer, then you'd use a grinder pump. Some people have, um, <clears throat> we've run into applications where they need the extra head pressure because they're pushing it uh, an extreme distance. So they need extra head pressure from a pump that can do that and you would use a grinder. The downfall on the grinders are, are this. The solids pump we showed earlier, that'll probably do 90 gallons a minute or more. It'll do a high volume of water. This pump, 30 gallons a minute. So it's not gonna do the volume of water so you can get caught up thinking, well, it does a lot of, you know, it does it in a high head, but it doesn't do the volume. And that's basically because of the, uh, the loot. This is also spending at 3,400 RPM. The other pumps are usually at 1,750. So this is a much faster motor when it's spinning. And the reason they do that is they want that blade to cut anything that it comes into contact with. I do not, on a grinder pump, the power definitely needs to be turned off before you go in there. Don't ever stick your hand in a, in a tank. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to, but people do some dumb things. Just don't do it like, oh, it's bound up. I'm gonna stick my hand down there and try to get it. This thing will cut your hand off and your fingers really fast. It's just extremely dangerous to do it. Make sure the power is killed, everything's off before you work on these. Um, so that's a grinder pump. Not everybody needs these. Uh, they are an option. Uh, this is a Zoller. This is a one horsepower Shark. It's a great pump. They make great units. So we have that. This is what we call a high head affluent pump, turbine pump, sprinkler pump. There's, there's different names for them. Uh, really, they're a high head pump. These pumps were initially designed for water well applications. So uh, these go down a four inch pipe. The pump is three inches in diameter. It gives a little bit of clearance and they go down hundreds of feet uh, to where the water is and then pump them up. Septic people figured out, because we, uh, in a lot of states we spray, these provide enough head pressure to put in a septic tank and the water is clean enough after it's treated to use this as a pump and they last a long time. So that's what these pumps are here. This pump here is a bottom suction pump, so this design is a little bit different. 
These were intentionally, originally intended for cisterns, so they could draw down as much water as possible in the cistern before water had to go in there, and that's why the intake is on the bottom. These pumps <clears throat> have a cavity here where you can put in a three inch pipe to kind of get them off the bottom of the tank because solids will settle on there. Um, so that's why, you know, they have that on there. They also come with a cap that raises them up a little bit. All your pumps in this range, in the half horsepower, 95%, I've heard some with an inch and a half discharge, two inch discharge, very rare, or inch and a quarter, okay? They all have built in check valves, uh, all those things. It's not recommended to, to remove the check valve. <clears throat> it's actually needed for, uh, for the pump's operation. It's actually good if you remove the check valve, then water that's in there can come back. It's just, it's just not a good thing. So leave the check valve installed. Um, these pumps are very prevalent in your southern states. So where sprinkler and dripper are prevalent, these are prevalent. Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Mississippi, all those states will have this type of pump. They're pretty common in Washington as well with uh, drip systems. But uh, this pump is highly prevalent in that. It's only used for filtered effluent. And what that means is that you have a trash tank, you have an aerobic system, you have a uh, clarifier that uh, clarifies the water. And it's not completely clear, but it's, it's pretty clean. Um, and then it goes into a pump tank. Then this, this pump is in there and it pumps it out. So that's what these pumps are intended for. You will not see these on a... Uh, pumping it from a shop to the house or pumping it from the house to the city sewer or anything like that. That's what these pumps are intended for. These pumps come in a wide range of horsepowers. I would say 90% of the pumps sold are 20 gallons a minute. There are some tens and a couple of thirties, but the majority of them are 20 gallons a minute. And that's what is the most prevalent out there for this type of pump. Some of your commercial applications will have bigger pumps uh, one horsepower, two horsepower, they need to move more water, they have more spray heads. But in general, if you're a homeowner, 90% chance it's going to be one of these two pumps that is in there. It'll be 115 volt. It'll be a 20 gallon a minute pump. So those are the different types of pumps, uh, what their applications are, what you need, uh, and things like that. That's it. I hope you guys have a great day. Subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you on the next video.